When Intel's older leak CPUs launched, I had a few comments on my original reviews and heard a few rumors that the chips that us reviewers got were, well, let's say, special. They were the, the cream of the crop. They were the, the best, the, the highest bin, the, the best overclockers, the lowest power consumption, basically all cherry-picked golden samples. That means that what you, the hardworking consumer, would actually end up buying and get with your hard-earned cash, well, that's not the same as what we, the, the tech reviewers, received, and that's a pretty big deal. Now, to be clear, this sort of thing, these sorts of allegations, are far from new. Back when Intel launched the 8700K, it was suggested that review samples that were sent to reviewers were cherry-picked, and in fact, the retail samples would perform considerably worse, especially in overclocking. In fact, this practice isn't even specific to Intel, or just at all. It's been alleged or even outright caught from a number of different companies over the course of decades. AMD were accused with the launch of their R9 290X GPUs. EVGA were actually caught sending a, a polished sample of their power supply for review. And honestly, the list just goes on. But why? Well, on the face of it, it's pretty simple. The company, in this case Intel, uh, sends media publications a, a slightly special sample that will perform maybe just a, a little bit better. Maybe it'll have less power draw, anything that can improve its, its performance just a bit. Then we as media get to report that Intel's new CPU destroys AMD. And then you, the consumer, take that information and make a purchasing decision based on it. Now, there's a pretty big risk that if the samples are, are too much better than retail, that'll be pretty obvious. But a little performance bump might be enough to swing some conclusions. So, did they? Well, the lovely folks at CyberPower sent me this entire system, their Infinity X125 Pro PC, with an i5-12600KF, RTX 3070, a DDR4 board and RAM, and a 1TB SSD, as well as both the i7-12700KF, which I'm going to be reviewing separately and checking out in its own video, so do make sure you're subscribed to that, and an i9 12900K. That means that I can test both of these retail chips against my i5 and i9 that Intel sent me as part of their press kit prior to launch. I've retested all four of these chips in this system with this GPU and DDR4 for a, a more proper comparison. So are my review samples rigged? Well, looking at the Cinebench R23 single-threaded data, Technically speaking, both of the retail samples are a fraction faster than my review samples. It's under a single point on the i5, aka well within margin of error, in fact that is uh, very, like, effectively identical, and even on the i9 it's only a couple of points, or around 1% faster, so again, well close enough. In multi-threaded, the retail i5 stays a fraction faster, but this time my review i9 is, uh, again, a, a slight hair, a fraction higher than the retail one. We're only talking about half a percent, though, so it's really within margin of error. Just to confirm that this isn't just boosting higher in Cinebench, I also ran the Blender BMW scene, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much, in fact, it's exactly identical on the i5s, and my review i9 is just about a second faster when you round everything up and down, but that's still well within a, around a percent, one percent faster, so really I, I'd call that close enough. Interestingly, the peak power usage on the i5, the, the, the retail i5, was actually consistently around 5 watts less than my review i5, although that is the, the KF, meaning it doesn't have integrated graphics, but since I never used the integrated graphics on any of these chips, including during this testing, I wouldn't say that that's maybe the biggest factor, but either way, it's still pretty close, and uh, my review i9 is kind of the other way around. 
at the at peak power usage, my review chip uh, quoted around 10 watts less than the retail sample, which seems pretty significant, but I believe I've had some power reporting issues, especially with the i9, and so I wouldn't take that one too seriously. And also, if you look at the more stable power, that's a lot closer within a couple of percent, and so again, I would call that pretty, uh, pretty well matched. What about gaming? Well, in CSGO, both retail chips outperformed my review samples in all metrics. The i5 ran around 5% faster, and the i9 was around 2.5% faster as well. And even in the 1% lows, both retail chips bested their review sample counterparts. In Watch Dogs Legion, the chips almost completely tied, with the only catch being a bit of variability in the 1% low figures, and the 12600KF netting a, a fairly strange 2 FPS average more, but again that's pretty spot on and I, I can't say this is helping, let's say, prove the, the null hypothesis wrong here. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider isn't helping either, with both retail chips taking the very, very slight edge in every result, even the CPU render average and 95% figures are generally within a percent or two, but still higher on the retail samples, not my review ones. So is Intel sending us reviewers cherry picked rigged golden sample chips? Well, it sure doesn't look like it. Although the sample size of four that I have here, a conclusive study does not make. But even if you take an average of every reviewer who tested with DDR4, since that's what I'm using here, uh, which is actually a shockingly low number for the i5 especially, but shockingly low in general, uh, even if you take an average of all of those, well, you still get within 1% of the total performance, at least looking at Cinebench in both single-threaded and multi-threaded, and so again, that's pretty hard to say that that's a, a significant performance difference. Again, that's not a, a, a conclusive scientific investigation, but it's the best that I can do with what I have and what I can find. That's also not to say that this sort of thing couldn't or doesn't happen. It certainly can, as I mentioned at the start, and does from time to time, but in this case, it doesn't look like that's happened here. And in fact, a number of those cherry-picked accusations were caused by things like the multi-core enhancement setting ASUS has had enabled by default for years, which basically disables the default Intel power limits or stock power limits, allowing the chips to run harder and push for higher boost clocks for longer. Uh, and AMD's R9290X issue was a fan curve sort of bug that they fixed fairly quickly with a driver update uh, to fix that, that bug on their reference designed cards. It's good to keep a skeptical eye on this sort of thing because as we've seen it, it can and does happen, but there is the catch that you shouldn't just assume every review sample you see is uh, automatically tampered with or cherry picked or uh, ultra special, especially without any sort of direct evidence. And when allegations like this do come out, it's worth getting as much data as possible before making your mind up and accusing the companies or reviewers of being part of a, a conspiracy to take your money and, uh, you know, defraud you in some way. It's also worth mentioning that the review sample process in general isn't perfect. There are potential uh, fairly significant issues, like companies deliberately only sending samples to, let's say, less critical outlets and refusing to send samples to ones who might actually test and find issues, or even things like purposefully delaying samples to outlets, like we saw with the NZXT case and Gamers Nexus fairly recently. It's far from perfect, but that doesn't mean that the data you see, or even the reviews in general, are all flat out pointless or skewed. With that said, those are my thoughts on the, the data that I can personally collect, but if you have any thoughts of your own, I would love to hear them in the comments down below. 
If you have any uh, questions or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments as well. If you want to pick up either this Sarapara PC or these CPUs, I'll leave links to both of them in the description down below with the uh, links to the CPUs likely being some Amazon affiliate links and of course the CyberPower one uh, will not be a direct affiliate link but they did send me the system so just so you know. Uh, otherwise there is a load of links in the description as well if you want to support the channel. There's also uh, easy ways like hitting that subscribe button and turning the bell notification icon on or you can check out that YouTube join button to support the channel, keep me making these videos, these tests and projects like the open source response time tool uh, or you can do that on Patreon instead. Both of them give you some cool rewards as well. You can pick up hoodies and t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs. Uh, there's a load of stuff, feel free to check it out. I'll mostly leave some more videos on the end cards if you want to keep watching there too. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.